Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining today's webinar, Expert Strategies to Drive Direct Bookings. We'll be getting started in just two minutes. Thanks again, everyone, for joining today's session, Expert Strategies to Drive Direct Bookings. We'll be getting started in just one minute as we have a few more people joining on the line. Hello everyone, and we're so happy you're watching today's webinar, Expert Strategies to Drive Direct Bookings, presented by TripAdvisor and TripTease. I'm Diane Halleck, and I head up the hotel's product marketing team here at TripAdvisor. Before we begin, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items, as always. Your screen is interactive, and you can resize or close any of the widget boxes by dragging the corners of each one. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see today's speakers and then the media widget box where you can adjust the volume of the presentation. Below the media widget is our resource center for this webinar. It contains lots of helpful links that our speakers will be addressing throughout the presentation. Below the resource center is the Q&A widget. If you have any questions during the webcast, simply enter them into the widget, press submit, and they'll be answered by members of the webinar team via the chat function. Jeff and Charlie will also do some Q&A at the end of the session, but they'll be addressing questions submitted via the survey that was included in the registration form, so we can make sure we're covering the most popular questions we received, and there were a lot of them. At the bottom of your window are several other tools you can use throughout the webinar. If you have any technical difficulties, please click on the Help widget, which is the question mark. It covers all the common technical issues you might have. There's also a feedback survey widget marked with a clipboard in the bottom toolbar. This survey will also open automatically at the end of the presentation. But your feedback helps shape the content we cover in these webinars, and my team will read every one of your responses. So we greatly appreciate you taking the time to share your thoughts. And finally, if you have any audio or streaming issues during the presentation, please press F5 on a PC or Command plus R on a Mac to refresh the console. And now, let's start today's session with some information you shared with us in the registration survey. Over a thousand of you responded with your thoughts, so thank you so much. First up, you told us your top three most common direct booking challenges, which were property exposure, OTA competition, and website optimization. You also told us the top three most common ways that you're tackling these challenges, which were improving website experience, offering promotions and deals, and collecting more reviews. That feedback is what's influenced the content we'll be covering today. Our speakers who will be addressing those topics are Jeff Arena, Senior Director of Product for TripAdvisor, and Charlie Osmond, Founder and Chief Tees for TripTees. In terms of our agenda today, Jeff will start off by sharing insights into how you can use TripAdvisor to get in front of the right audience, build confidence in your property, and make direct bookings easy and compelling for customers. Then Charlie will address parity, conversion basics, personalization, and syncing acquisition and conversion. From there, we'll move into Q&A where we'll address the most common questions submitted in the webinar registration survey. 
And now, turning it over to Jeff Arena to get started. Thanks, Diane. Uh, when it comes to direct bookings, there's really three major buckets you need to focus on. Uh, the first is getting in front of the right audience to drive more traffic to your property and ultimately your booking site. Uh, the second is building traveler confidence in your property so that they're re when they're ready to book, they choose to book directly with you. Third, making Booking Direct easy and appealing to help reduce your reliance on OTAs. Let's first talk about the right audience and how to get in front of it. So the traveler journey is not linear, but rather a tangled web of visiting different sites, researching different options, and compiling all the data to make a final decision. In fact, travelers shop around for 89 days on average. During this time, they conduct at least 14 unique searches and view over 180 pages across various sites. However, despite all the different resources they use, travelers trust TripAdvisor above them all, which is why having a presence on TripAdvisor is so important for your business. Well, Jeff, trust is great, but where are users spending their time during this protracted planning window, you might ask yourself? Um, and the answer to that question is, the majority of travelers come to TripAdvisor before booking their accommodation, and a quarter of all the time they spend researching and shopping around is spent on our site. This reaffirms the influence TripAdvisor has over travelers' booking decisions and why it's important to get in front of them and become a part of their consideration set. So what's the best way to capitalize on this audience? The answer is sponsored placements. Sponsored placements amplifies your property's presence across high-profile shopping pages, including search results and local competitors' pages. Plus, your ads will only show to travelers who are the best matches for your property based on your search criteria such as location, dates, property type, amenities, etc., making this even more highly qualified audience. And I'm excited to announce that our team has made even more targeting enhancements to the sponsored placements product, which are designed to help drive more bookings. We use predictive analytics and machine learning to target travelers who are closer to making their booking decisions with the ultimate goal of increasing your overall conversions. Our technology takes into account a variety of traveler search signals, such as search dates, length of stay, user country, and device type to automatically target this higher intent audience. Moving on to the second of our three pillars uh, for driving direct bookings, it's time to help build their confidence in booking with your property. TripAdvisor is a powerful tool for consumers seeking out value, choice, and information. Properties should work together with TripAdvisor to ensure that their property is reflected accurately on the site. We suggest you focus on these top factors that influence a traveler's booking decision. In the following slides, we'll talk through what you can do to manage these top four aspects of your TripAdvisor listing and strengthen your presence on the site. And these top four aspects are obviously location, reviews, amenities and description, and finally price. So starting things off with location. Locational context is a top priority. Respondents continually rank location over hotel amenities on a list of priorities when booking yet many properties still highlight amenities over location. TripAdvisor automatically includes a map on your listing page and pulls in local things to do and places to eat. So it's very important to ensure your location is accurate on the site, otherwise these localized suggestions will mislead and confuse potential guests. For those accommodations in a particularly exciting area, you should also go beyond that and use your property description to proactively communicate your proximity to other places of interest on a person's trip such as a natural landmark, neighborhood, or urban area, so potential customers aren't left searching maps to see where they'll be. Don't forget to bring this locational context to your website as well. Moving on to the second most important aspect of your listing, the power of reviews. 97% of travelers choose reviews as a top factor in their booking decision. And another study shows that 86% of travelers use reviews to help them feel more confident in their booking decisions. Get your guests talking and encourage them to write reviews by training all your employees to ask guests for a review. Simply asking goes a long way. But it's also important to follow up with guests after their trip when their experience is still fresh in their minds. 
An easy and free way to do this is to use Review Express to email your guests after their stay. Review Express is a completely free and automated tool also available in your management center. Simply customize and save your email template and then blast out an email to up to 1,000 recent guests. On to the third aspect of your TripAdvisor listing, amenities. Though amenities aren't the number one factor when choosing a place to stay, they're still very high at number three in the list. TripAdvisor has hundreds of amenities for, uh, for you to choose from to add to your listing in the management center, and we've just added another 200 more. Many travelers filter by amenities or search for specific keywords, so if you haven't confirmed that you have these amenities, now is a great time to log in and do so. Otherwise, you could be missing out on potential guests searching for a property just like yours. When writing a description, focus on the uniqueness of a guest experience at your property. As mentioned previously, this is also a great spot to include any context about your location in relation to major landmarks or points of interest, as well as a one-of-a-kind qualities uh, or service. When writing a description, the more genuine you sound, the better. Stay away from writing anything too formal or robotic. This is your place to really speak to your guests and show your top-notch customer service. Uh, rounding out the top four aspects of your TripAdvisor listing, pricing is really important. Just like consumers purchasing in any other industry, travelers are looking for the best value. A proper pricing strategy is important for your property to stay competitive with other properties travelers might be considering. And we know it's a huge area of focus for you based on your feedback. You listed it as number three in the biggest challenges for driving direct bookings in your pre-webinar survey. So we're not going to talk about it now, but we'll come back to this later in this webinar and spend some more time talking about what tools TripAdvisor has to showcase your best rates on the site. So more to come there. So moving on, once you've done all the work to convince travelers that booking with you is the right option, you need to make sure that the actual booking process is easy and appealing. Having the ability to contact the hotel directly is vital for travelers when they're choosing a place to stay. And as we mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, every traveler's journey is different and the same goes for how they want to be able to get in touch with you. Some may want to book on their own directly through your website, while others may want to handle it via phone or email. It's important to offer, offer multiple forms of contact to cater to travelers' different preferences. Given TripAdvisor is the most trusted brand out, out there, it only makes sense to include your contact details on your listing page on TripAdvisor. With Business Advantage, you have the ability to do so. You can customize your contact options to display your top three preferred methods of communication right at the top of your page. And don't forget about mobile. Over a third of travelers book their last accommodation via a mobile site or app. With more and more travelers utilizing mobile, add the click-to-call function so that travelers are always only one click away. Uh, stepping back, we recently ran a direct booking survey to better understand travelers' bookings, booking behaviors. Uh, we found the top three factors that would make travelers more likely to book directly with a property are getting exclusive deals or offers, a best price guarantee, or receiving special perks or amenities for booking directly. This is great news for hoteliers because these are easy tactics for you to implement right away. On TripAdvisor, properties can highlight their special offers as part of their Business Advantage subscription. These offers are called out in search results in your listing page and linked directly back to your booking website. Travelers also have the option to filter for properties with special offers, giving you yet another way to stand out from your competitors. We recommend utilizing this feature to highlight booking direct offers. As I mentioned previously, we know how important price is to both travelers and hoteliers alike. It's especially difficult to stand out against OTAs even when you have a competitive or better rate for booking direct. Well, with TripConnect cost per click, you have the ability to display your direct rates alongside OTAs. Showing off your direct rate combined with your special offers makes your direct booking even more compelling. You've all said that competition with OTAs is one of the biggest challenges you face when it comes to direct bookings and that it's so hard to stand apart from them. I'm so excited to share with you all that based on feedback from hoteliers like yourself, we've updated the Sponsored Placements product to help drive more direct bookings. 
With this beta feature, you can now use TripConnect cost per click together with sponsored placements to not only increase your property's visibility, but display your direct rate above all other booking channels. So if driving direct bookings is your main business objective, and I suspect it is because you're on this webinar, you now have the ability to have your direct rate showcased above the OTAs in your ads on search results, but also on your listing page, guaranteed as part of the uh, sponsor placements campaign. In that same direct booking survey, we also found out the top things that would make travelers less likely to book directly with a property. The first, having a website that's hard to navigate, requiring a full payment up front, not offering the ability to cancel or make reservations, make changes to the reservation for free, not having a hotel website, or worse, having a slow website. While all of these factors are important, I'm going to hand it over to Charlie to talk about the ones that impact your hotel website and what you can do about it. Charlie, thanks for joining us today and take it away. Thanks, Jeff. Um, I'm really excited to talk about direct bookings um, and the hotel website. But just before I do, can I ask you a quick question? Because I, I think that bit of news was really interesting about um, now being able to use TripConnect to appear higher in the search results. So if hotels want to do that, do they pay a bit more? How does it work? So as part of a sponsored placements campaign, uh, customers can uh, also set up a, set up a TripConnect campaign. Um, that trip connect campaign, they are paying for traffic um, that is coming direct to their website uh, for hoteliers that were searching uh, on TripAdvisor. If they layer on top of that a sponsored placements campaign, um, they would have that listing boosted up to the top of our search results. And right. yes, they would pay a little bit more for interacting with that, that sponsored placements ad at the top of the search results. Uh, so you're paying cost per click for the TripAdvisor uh, listing and then cost per click for the ad uh, boost up to the top of the page. Okay, cool. But they get to be guaranteed number one. That is really, that's a big shift, Absolutely. big change. Great. Um, good. Sorry, it's news for me too. So I wanted to make sure I understood it. Uh, so, um, hi, I'm Charlie Osmond. I'm the Chief Tease at Trip Tease. Um, a little bit about us. We help hotels drive conversion on their websites. So we work with uh, tens of thousands of hotels tracking guest behavior tracking every single movement that a guest does on a hotel website to try and understand better what's going to make each guest convert direct. So I spend a lot of my time thinking about how to drive direct and looking at different hotels, different websites, and understanding what makes the best work well. So um, I'm going to try and share a little bit of our experience and what we find uh, works best for direct bookings. Um, and hopefully you'll find some of that useful. And if not, feel free to ask questions at the end. Okay. So the... Um, uh, following on from what Jeff said, he talked a, a lot about the key things that people do to choose a place to stay. Um, and I think one of the distinctions I usually I like to make, because I just think it's helpful, is it's worth uh, appreciating that your guests are making two different decisions. Um, there are two decisions they have to make. The first one is picking a hotel, um, and we just heard loads of great advice on uh, what to do to get people to choose your property. The second decision people make um, is often a split second between these two decisions. Often it's uh, not necessarily something that consciously people are doing, but they are making a second decision. The second decision is how I'm going to book, what channel I'm going to book on. Am I going to book via an OTA? Am I going to book direct? Um, and I guess most of my focus here is really about that, uh, how to make sure that when they've decided on your property, they then decide to book direct. Um, the good news for hotels is that a vast majority of guests will book your uh, will visit sorry will visit your website. Even OTA bookers, um, I think you know booking Expedia visitors, about two thirds of them will have gone to the hotel website before booking, and that's because the hotel website really is seen as the ultimate source of truth. So the good news is hotels are able to attract a certain number of guests to their website. The bad news is that most hotel websites don't do a great job of converting people and off they trot back to the OTAs. So um, I want to talk about some four areas that I think are really key in um, helping hotels make sure that they're driving more bookings direct. Parity, some conversion basics personalization, and then joined up acquisition and conversion, so getting people to the site who are the right people and make sure you're spending the right amount of money on them. Uh, so the first one is parity, and this is a subject very dear to my heart and has been for the last five years. Uh, I can't tell you how many hoteliers I speak to who uh, are, are insistent and convinced that they have great parity and that their prices are rarely undercut. 
um, and I'm afraid actually the vast majority of the time we find that that's not, it's not quite true um, and hoteliers' parity is not as good as they hope or wish. The reason why parity is really important is because we're living in a world of perfect information. TripAdvisor, um, Google and other places you can see price comparisons. Every single person on the internet knows they can see a price comparison you know, within about 10 seconds of starting a search. So that means that everyone can find out what the cheapest channel is. And when it comes to this second decision, this choosing the channel, the single most important factor in people's minds is what's the price. Um, if you're more expensive than booking on another channel, you're far less likely um, to get those bookings. Uh, in fact, what we find, because we're looking at um, hotel websites uh, when there are guests there, whether the hotel website is in parity or not, what we find is that if you're undercut by OTAs, then the conversion rate on your website goes down by over a third. You cannot expect, you cannot ask people to spend more money for the benefit of booking direct. Right? They need, they need to, the first, the most important thing is that you're not trying to overcharge people or, or charge them more. And I, I use the word overcharge um, on purpose because actually from a consumer point of view, you as a hotelier, when you're being undercut by an OTA, you might feel a little frustrated. Of course, a consumer, when they see that the hotel is uh, trying to charge more than the OTA, they often feel that you're trying to rip them off. You know, it's a really bad starting experience with your brand if they feel, gosh, this hotel I want to book at is trying to rip me off. It's cheaper to go to booking.com. You, you have to fix parity. You have to take it very seriously. So number one um, in driving direct bookings is make sure you're not being undercut. And there are many different ways you can do that. Um, a lot of hoteliers will just go, go and run searches. And if you're going and running searches on your own um, uh, perhaps on TripAdvisor or other places, seeing what the comparison price is. You know, remember, most guests are not searching for just one night. So make sure you're running searches for two nights. Make sure you're running searches for next week as well as for tomorrow. Um, do the kinds of searches real guests are doing. And then there are other tools. Um, we, we run uh, searches uh, across hotels. There are other companies like RateGain and OTA Insight that you can subscribe to um, to be able to track your parity. And I guess the key point here is most hoteliers think their parity is great and very often it isn't. Um, so you really do need to investigate. And the final, um, I think, area that I really want to touch on on fixing parity, one that is a very hot topic um, at the moment across, uh, across the world, I guess, especially um, in Asia and Europe, is um, the challenge of dealing with uh, third-party rates um, being leaked by wholesalers. Uh, in fact, there's a, there's a report um, on the Triptease website that you can go and read about how hoteliers, hoteliers are trying to deal with this. It's quite a big subject, so I don't want to cover it all here. But top three tips from me would be shifting to dynamic rates. Obviously, static rates are more likely to drive undercutting. Uh, having test bookings and having a rigorous process where if you catch a wholesaler undercutting you and passing on rates three times, you turn them off. And you really have to um, stick up for yourself and turn them off uh, for a week or a month um, until they put it right. Um, and then the third one, one of my favorite new techniques I'm seeing is if wholesalers are telling you they can bring you good lead time business 30 days out, 45 days out, uh, it's often some of the best uh, hotels at managing parity are turning wholesalers off when it's five day lead times. So when you've got someone who's looking to book your hotel just a couple of days away, they're almost certainly going to go onto the internet. You don't really need wholesalers to drive that kind of business. So making sure you're closing off wholesalers when you're looking like you've got you know, good, um, good bookings um, in the last few days can have a really big impact on driving better parity. Anyway, there's a few little tips. Uh, you've got to take it seriously. And then if you want to go one step further, you can, of course, um, use a price check kind of tool showing a price comparison live on your website. Um, this is one which uh, we at Triptease deliver, uh, but there are you know, a number of different ways that you can show a price comparison just to give people the confidence. In a sense, it's a step beyond the best rate guarantee. Uh, we see best rate guarantee is something that people put around the web, and there are so many of them, and yet we know that prices are all over the place that I think there's a bit less trust in them. So if you can actually show a live price comparison, that boosts confidence and conversion um, by around, we see 20 to 30% on independent hotel websites. Okay, so that's it on parity. I could go on about that one forever. Um, but it is, it is the first thing to fix. Um, second, some conversion basics. So uh, I'm sure you've spent time on OTA websites. They are incredible, impressive conversion machines. And I guess the reason why I wanted to call out um, OTA websites, first of all, when I think of conversion basics, is I think hoteliers need to be clear what business they're in. If your goal is to drive direct bookings. If that really is resolutely something that you're trying to do as a business, then you, you're in the e-commerce business. You're trying to be an e-commerce company. 
And very often we see hotel websites where uh, they're not, they don't perceive or see themselves as e-commerce businesses. And they're putting the selling, I guess, their hotel, the choice of the property first, um, and then trying to drive a conversion second. And you've kind of got to decide what, what you want to be and where you want to be. I, you know, if you go and look at very expensive luxury brands like Gucci um, and Prada, and you go to their websites today, they have become e-commerce businesses. They're all about selling now. Um, less, obviously, they're still trying to push the brand, but they really want to drive a purchase. And if you want to compete for direct, that's kind of what you need to be. You need to be very clear um, that you also want to be an e-commerce company. So as I said, one of the things we're doing is tracking behavior across thousands of hotel websites. What we tend to find is there is massive difference uh, between the hotel websites that are driving high level of conversions, the outperformers and the underperformers. It is possible you know, for two hotels in a city, two hotels side by side, one of them to get three, four percent of their bookings direct on their website and the other one to get 30 percent. Um, really big differences. One of the places to start looking um, is your booking engine because obviously people are running a search um, very often if they're serious uh, thinking about booking um, and different booking engines we find convert at de very different rates. So we sit across uh, loads of different booking engines. These are sort of, I think, 12 of the top ones. And the conversion rate here is what people are getting between running a search and converting. So it's not the conversion rate of your full website. It's someone who's run a search for certain dates. And what you can see is that the best performing booking engine is averaging 6.8% 6 conversion rate. And you know, number 12 is coming in at 3.3%. Uh, so the, the switching or choosing, I should say, the right booking engine is a really good first start. And the kind of differences we see between the booking engines that do best and those that don't are just a simple flow. How clear is it for each step of the booking engine process what the guests should be doing next to get to the next page? Um, and it's really simple things. And I guess that's the key message here on these conversion basics. There, I, I, I considered showing you lots of examples of different flows and what different uh, booking engines or websites were doing well. But ultimately, you've all got your own websites. And the single best bit of advice I can give you is to put yourself in your guest's shoes. And there are a couple of different ways of doing that. Whenever we're building new things on hotel websites, one of the first things our team do is they um, load up a mock of uh, how they want the website to behave and they put it on a laptop or they put it on their iPad and they go down to Starbucks. And in Starbucks, they say to someone, random, can I buy your coffee? Will you give me feedback on my new website? And they just get random people um, to just walk through the website that they've designed and explain what they see and talk about what they're trying to do. And just by listening to some random people tell you what they're doing, what they're experiencing on your website, you'll be amazed at the insights you can get. So my recommendation to you would be, you know, go, whether it's going and seeing your parents, whether it's your kids or your friends, someone who doesn't work in your industry, ask them, give them a credit card and say, I want to watch you book on my website. And I'm going to watch every step and please talk to me as you go through each step. Um, and just listen to what they say and watch what they do and where their eyes go and how they scroll around your website. And you'll be amazed how instantly clear it can be the things you need to change on your own website. You don't need to spend you know, loads of money on fancy consultants. You can just go and watch um, guests. Other ways you can do this is there are tools um, like Hotjar where you can see how people scroll around your website that you can install on your website um, or Full Story where you can watch videos of users on your website. You can see where people get stuck um, and where they need help. So really go put yourself in your guest shoes um, and then my one final tip on that, really quick one if you want to try it, is um, get your website loaded up now on your, on your laptop and, and wheel your chair as long as your, your room is large enough. Wheel your chair back, you know, back to the 10 yards away from your computer. Have a look at your hotel website from 10 foot, 10 yards away. Um, and what happens, of course, is you can't see the detail. You don't see all the you know, little writing. You just see the big call to action. You see the major messages. When people are rushing through websites like we do today in 2019, they're not reading all the text. They're just seeing the big stuff that jumps out. So when you're looking at your website from 10 foot away, you actually, you're getting a, bit, a little bit like that experience that, um, that a visitor might be getting. So try that uh, top tip and you should start to see, are we being really clear about what the actions we want people to take? Okay, so that was um, number two. Number three, personalization. Um, so if you want to take, go sort of the next level, uh, you need to think about the different types of people who are coming to your website. So one of the things we always like to do, this is a, for a hotel in Taiwan, is we like to look at different guests, um, where they're coming from, how they spend or behave differently on the website. So you can see here that the American guests 
are very highly converting and they're spending a lot. The Taiwanese are a high volume of visitors to this website, but they convert for much smaller value um, and at a lower rate. And you know, just instantly looking at this, hopefully you get an idea that there are very different guests with very different behavior on your website today. And if you want to go the next level, you know, beyond just making the basics work, then you need to start thinking about the different guests and their different needs on your website. And that's really what personalization is all about. So there's an opportunity with a hotel website um, to personalize the experience, personalize the content to fit different guests. And what we see um, across you know, small hotel groups um, is that personalization drives a conversion uplift of around 16%. So this was, we did a large A-B test across 10,000 hotels, and we saw that there's a really significant difference um, if you start speaking to people uh, and helping them um, based on uh, their behavior and who they are. So what does that mean? Well, you can look at uh, data around guests who are on your website. You can understand, is this someone running a search for um, a, uh, like a multi-day search, so they're high value, or are they searching and looking at the suites? Is this a repeat visitor? Are they looking a long way out uh, when we've got vacancies, or are they looking for tonight when we're, we're full? You can look at the data um, just from the way people behave on your website and then make different decisions about what content to show them, and that content can drive a much better conversion. Uh, so, for example, you might segment people here, for example, by U.S. state, uh, whether they're new or returning, and then you can target them with different messages. Uh, if you're looking at booking date, you might give people a message uh, that if they're booking a long way in advance, they get a discount or some sort of incentive. Um, and you might give someone who's booking for tonight, again, a very different type of message. But this kind of personalization is actually now very simple to do um, on hotel websites. Uh, other people who you see browsing for a long time but not quite making, uh, making a decision, you might want to give them some social proof and show them some review scores, obviously, uh, your TripAdvisor reviews to give them real confidence. And, uh, and, and just to kind of give you an example, here's, here's a test that was running last week for one of our hotel, uh, hotel groups that we work with. They, uh, they had two different pop-ups they were testing with because often you, know, you might change your website but you don't really know if it's going to work. And so uh, what's useful is to use a tool where it's possible to run A-B tests. Um, and uh, what you can see here is two different variants that are very similar. So these were pop-ups that appeared. 50% of the people got the one on the left. 50% of people got the one on the right. I don't know if you'd like to have a guess, Jeff, or which one you think might have driven uh, higher click-throughs. The inside, so the title changes, inside a sale versus exclusive offer, and the button changed from see my savings to reveal offer. I'm going to guess variant B tested better. Excellent guess. Variant B tested better. Variant B drove 42% uplift in conversions um, for this hotel website. 42%, which is massive compared to variant A. And um, Jeff got it right because he's obviously an absolute expert at this stuff and does it all day. I think the key, one of the key points about A-B testing is the truth is it's very, very rare that people can consistently guess what's going to work um, and what will work for different audiences, which is why it's quite useful to run tests. Um, so um, personalization and testing. How are we doing for time? All right. Okay, good. Um, fine. So uh, that's uh, a bit more about the website. And then finally... Um, joining up um, acquisition and conversion. So if you want to take things to the next level, and I should point out here, if you're a hotel who's really struggling for direct bookings, I've gone through you know four different areas: conversion basics, parity, personalization, and now joined up acquisition and conversion. Um, and I've gone through them in order of um, sophistication. So if you're in the early stages, just focus on getting the parity right. Then you know make sure some of your basics are right on your website. Do that stuff first. Um, this is really uh, you know just jam on top. Um, but it's certainly what uh, a lot of hoteliers are now starting to do a lot more. So if you think about, you know, traditionally how many of the activities um, that hotel marketing teams are having to undertake um, are carried out, uh, they're often quite disparate and discreet. So thinking about what can we do on our website, um, how much should we be spending on pay-per-click ads or whatever else. And I, one, of the, one of the changes that we're really trying to drive through the industry partly in response to knowing this is exactly how the OTAs work and they get better results as a, um, as a result, uh, is joining up the data. So using the data from guest uh, visits, guest behavior on your website, using that data to drive smarter bidding um, in like online acquisition, whether it's advertising on TripAdvisor or elsewhere. 
Um, and equally, using the data you see from a guest coming from TripAdvisor versus if they come from a different source, giving them a different message on the website can you know, be another way of driving personalization. So really trying to join up the funnel um, and sharing data across the funnel is, we think, the, really the next step in driving performance in direct bookings. Um, so to give you a few examples of what I mean by all this joined up data, uh, here's uh, some research we, we just put out. We looked at 2,000 hotels and their bids on MetaSearch over the last couple of years. And what we found was, um, as you can see if you follow the line, that the, the cost per click for driving people to, the, to hotel websites changed massively from, say, May to August. The cost per clicks in May were about $1.31, uh, $1 and then they go down quite significantly um, in August. Um, and you know this is aggregate data, and th knowing this kind of data can help you make a decision that you might not want to be bidding in May, or maybe you do want to be bidding in May, but not in August, or whatever it happens to be. But the advantage, uh, or the thing that you have as a hotelier, um, that you really need to you know use to gain some advantage in the market is your own data. So not only you know what are we paying and how's what we're paying differing uh, year, month to month, week to week, day to day, but actually more importantly than that is when you're bidding for people, say in May um, or in August, or when you're bidding people to drive to your website um, based on different uh, behavior or different characteristics, like which country they come from, how does that impact the return on investment you get from guests who look like that? So if you know, for example, that in your hotel, guests who are searching from Germany um, are likely to put, book short stays, and guests who are searching from France are likely to put more high value long stays, then you should be bidding differently and spending more on that person from France. And I guess the key point here is you've got a unique data source, right? Your guests on your hotel website and how they spend in your property. You need to use that data to your advantage and differentially bid on people um, through TripAdvisor, for example, uh, in order to get the best return on investment. So uh, a, key, you know, key, a key opportunity here is using the data about who converts best, who's worth money to you um, to drive smarter bidding. Um, another example of joining up data is there are days when you're, you've got the best price in the market um, and there are searches for which you don't have the best price in the market. So if, for example, you're choosing, do I want to bid on MetaSearch? Um, if people are searching for dates when you're out of parity, then bidding on those dates is not a great idea. The last thing you want to do is spend money on the days where you'd be advertising that you're overpriced. Um, we see this time and time again at the moment, hotels taking part in MetaSearch um, in a slightly less intelligent way and just always being available. And if you're always available um, and you've got bad parity, then often you might be advertising that you're an expensive place to book. And that's exactly what you don't want to advertise, right? You want to advertise when you're a great place to book. So again, using the data of knowing when you've got good parity and bidding more on those dates can help your money um, you know, stretch much further. So this is one of the things that we're really focused on helping hotels with, um, using data in this smarter way. Um, and as I say, very happy to answer questions at the end if you have any. Um, but the, the quick summary there was to regain control, keep it simple at first, just make sure you're not overpriced, get the conversion basics right, and then sort of the next level of sophistication is add personalization tools um, and then join up your acquisition and conversion data. If you uh, wanted to learn more about any of these things or other things that hoteliers are doing to drive um, direct bookings, then I'm very glad. Thank you, TripAdvisor, for letting me run a quick advert here. Um, then we have very soon uh, in the U.S. Uh, the Direct Booking Summit coming to Miami um, in October where we'll have 350 hoteliers and you hear nothing from me um, or other vendors. What you hear is other hotels talking about what they've done in the last year or two to try and drive direct, what's succeeded, what has failed. So if you want to come and be part of a major sharing around direct bookings, please come to Direct Booking Summit. And then there's also an event in Europe and one in Asia um, later in the year. Um, but hopefully that'll be useful. And I guess that brings us to the questions. Terrific. Thank you so much, Charlie. And thank you so much, Jeff. You've both shared tips that are sort of all over the board, from simple to complex. So hopefully there is some food for thought there for everybody who's on the line. Um, now I'll let you both catch your breath for a second. And just a quick reminder to the audience. So we collected the questions that we're going to address today in Q&A um, via the registration form in our pre-webinar sign-up. So we're going to be covering those questions today. If there's other questions that you want to ask to the team, please just drop them into the chat and we'll address them as we can. 
And so with that, we're going to transition over to the Q&A. So first, I'd like to ask a question for both of you. Um, what strategies would you suggest for a new hotel to increase website optimization and exposure? Charlie, let's start with you. Gosh, new hotels. Um, I think people think because I'm obsessed with direct bookings that I don't like OTAs. But actually, if you're a new hotel, then an OTA is your friend. And so uh, I think the key thing to focus on is using, obviously, the OTAs as part of driving exposure is, is not a bad idea when you're a new hotel. Bear in mind that hotels will find you um, out in the web, and then they will come to your website. So you've just got to be very, very simple and very clear in the early days as to now you are on our website and you have a choice of channel to book on. Um, here are some reasons to book direct. So just be really clear um, with your reasons to book direct. Uh, so I guess for new websites on TripAdvisor, really exposure and kind of visibility is what you're looking for in this case. And, um, you know, for a new property on TripAdvisor, obviously our, our rankings um, are greatly influenced by traveler reviews and new properties in general are obviously starting out with a bit of a disadvantage as compared with existing properties that have a, a large corpus of collected reviews. Um, so one of the things that we suggest from an exposure perspective is to take advantage of our sponsor placements product. It boosts your visibility. It pushes your listing right up to the top of the search results page, you know, married with a, a TripConnect CPC campaign. It also allows you to drive direct bookings through that ad placement, you know, for a new website uh, or new uh, hotel that might be a little premature on the, the uh, TripConnect CPC side. You know, if you're largely looking to drive bookings through OTAs, a uh, sort of sponsor placement standard campaign would help you do that. Um, and uh, ensure that you're getting a little bit more visibility and eyeballs on your property on TripAdvisor before you start to collect all that great review content that will naturally push you up in the organic rankings. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. So, Charlie, a question for you. How can I set appealing packages to boost direct reservations? Uh, wow, that's a great one. There are so many creative ways that we're seeing hoteliers um, put together direct benefits um, and direct packages. Um, I guess really answering this, the best way to think about the package is look at, ask your current guests. So read the reviews. What are guests saying they enjoyed about the property or when they were on their stay more broadly? And are there ways of turning some of those things into packages that everybody can benefit from? Um, but, but speak to them. Ask, ask guests um, what, would they, what would they like. I know uh, one hotelier um, in Asia who I know, um, he, every time he finds that um, a guest has booked his property by more than three times via OTAs, he makes sure the front desk tell him. And he goes and meets that guest when they're on, on property next. And he asks them, what would we need to do to get you to book direct? What kind of package would I need to put together? What would the benefits need to be? And so he's very clear about going and asking. Um, but there are so many things. It can be fun things. We've seen hotels who say, book direct and get a free pineapple. Um, I think the one that generally comes out top is uh, if there's a free room upgrade, if available. It's probably the simplest, easy place to start, but it can be breakfast, it can be Wi-Fi, it can be your first item of laundry, all sorts of things. Great. Thank you so much. Jeff, many respondents also asked on the, on the topic of reviews, how can they get more reviews on TripAdvisor? Yeah, great question. So um, you know, I, think, uh, I think there's a couple obvious techniques here. One is you know, with your hotel staff, uh, we mentioned earlier in the presentation, just asking, you know, soliciting reviews, as part of checkout, you know, as part of uh, positive guest experiences during stay. Um, those are sort of some of the basics. But when you're ready to kind of scale your, your review collection beyond, you know, what your staff is capable of doing on property, um, we have a product review express, you know, completely free for, to, for you to use as a registered property owner um, where you can request reviews from guests who have stayed at your property. Um, you know, there's an automated version of that tool that um, you might be able to take advantage of if you're working with a subset of our connectivity partners. Um, there's some information in the resource center uh, about Review Express that you can check out that'll uh, help explain how that product works. But, um, you know, soliciting reviews uh, after stay for folks that have stayed on property is, is also one technique beyond sort of the manual solicitation approach. Great. Um, now a question for both of you. How can I build exposure for my small independent hotel group to stand out against major chains and larger companies while on a modest budget? I, Sorry, the, I start with you. Yeah, this is a bit, a bit of a tricky one because obviously I don't know much about your small independent hotel group. So I guess my starting point is trying to understand like who is your customer? Uh, why should they choose you? you know, and make sure you're telling that story. There are many guests 
many people who like to book um, large chains, and there are many people who prefer not to. And you know, they're clear differentiators, and just make sure you're telling that story. Um, I guess the other the other bit that's slightly hard to answer in this one is it's hard to know whether you've got a challenge in converting people or you've got a challenge in driving visitors, the right type of visitors, um, to the site. Uh, so one of the things you might want to do there is uh, benchmarking. That's certainly something at Triptease we can help you with. If you want some free benchmarking, get in touch with me. I guess my email might be somewhere here, or I'm sure you can guess it. Um, and, um, and, and what we can do is look at other hotels in the same city uh, uh, and uh, assess whether you're, you actually need to work on your conversion rate or whether you need to work on um, driving volume of traffic. It's a, it's, a, it's a bit hard to be generic otherwise, but I guess understanding what is it the guests the guests who love you, what are they buying in? You know what? We're back to look at your reviews, find out what the people who love you really like, and make sure you tell that story. Okay, Jeff? Yeah, so customers today are less swayed by brands and more swayed by the, the sort of property itself and how that fits their individual needs. Um, in, uh, in 2018, there was a tripperometer survey, and I think only 39% of travelers said it was important to stay at a hotel with a brand name that they trusted. Um, and, and most of these travelers were families. So travelers are looking for more of a personalized experience and uh, you know, looking for a property that fits them and, and their needs specifically. So you know, make sure that your listing accurately reflects everything you have to offer, uh, high quality photos you know, that help differentiate your property, making sure that your amenities are up to date and reflective of, of what's available to customers on property. Um, and you know, once once the listing is up to date, you can obviously drive more traffic to your page and get more exposure using the sponsor placements products we've already talked about. Um, you know, by running these ads, you can put your property right at the top of the search results page and stay relevant for dates when you've got availability, and um, ultimately try drive traffic away from you know the properties and brands that um, that ultimately you're competing with. Great, thank you so much. Uh, Charlie, how can I create a, a reward system for repeat customers? Repeat customers. I guess this uh, this could be seen as a question about loyalty systems, and or, and there are companies who provide often as part of a CRM the potential to create a, a loyalty program. I would I would generally say that um, they're worth investing in only if you if you've got ten or twenty properties um, in locations that justify like high repeats or cross-pollination between properties. Otherwise, um, there are some industry reward programs that you can consider, like uh, the guest book. Um, uh, but the easiest thing you could do or you might want to do is, is provide a discount code. I've seen cards in my room that say, uh, thank you for staying. If you book direct next time or if you come back, use this code and get, um, get a discount. So that might be the simplest, easiest way. Great. Thank you so much. Jeff, uh, a really simple direct one here. How can I show my room rates on TripAdvisor? <laughs> I swear, it was a submitted question. <laughs> <laughs> that's an easy one. Uh, so obviously we talked about this earlier as part of the, the content in the presentation. Um, you know, using our TripConnect solution, uh, TripConnect CPC, um, or cost per click, you can uh, share your rates and availability with all the travelers searching for uh, properties like yours on TripAdvisor. Um, I can, I'll point you to the resource center again here. So we'll have some links for TripConnect. Um, so it's tripadvisor.com slash cost per click, but that'll be linked under TripConnect in the resource center on the right-hand side of your screen. Great. And another question for both of you. I have a B&B &B with only 16 rooms and cannot compete with larger organizations in getting a prime position on the search engines. What's the solution? So Charlie, a, a, a similar theme here that we're seeing. Um, so if you, uh, a prime position, this is a, a, a slightly challenging one, because obviously if you've got 16 rooms and you're in London, uh, then I wouldn't expect you ever to get a prime permit position on London hotels on a Google search. And, and I kind of think you don't need one. Um, I think one, the one thing I've seen recently I, at the last Direct Booking Summit, one hotel talked about how they were now getting great impact from SEO. Um, they had got a prime position because they were focusing all their SEO efforts on Google's new hotel search. Uh, so, you know, Google, most of the Google front page now is advertising, but the hotel search um, is mostly ranking. And by trying to focus their SEO efforts on that, they, they've seen some return. Um, maybe try uh, new channels like Airbnb, um, but be available, be well rated, have good parity. And if you're, if you're managing those things, then whether it's um, OTAs or somewhere like ABB, then, yeah, that helps you uh, climb up the rankings. 
Yes. Yeah, so um, in this case, I, I think uh, I think Charlie's got it right, and I, I would I would actually probably say that um, you you may be thinking about the optimization in probably the wrong order here. So, um, you know, focusing on prime position in the search engines is you in many ways looking at sort of top of the the funnel as it pertains to kind of user journey, um, and really what you want to be spending your time on is you know more down funnel, more highly qualified traffic. Um, so, you know, focusing on uh, trying to outcompete the OTAs or the large brands, you know, in, uh, in the Google ecosystem is going to be difficult. And as you've already cited, is probably going to be price uh, prohibitive. Um, you know, if you were to look at products like, uh, you know, the beta of our sponsored placements product with TripConnect, um, you've got the ability to choose your ads, uh, target them to travelers that are further along in that booking journey, uh, who are more likely to convert. Um, you're putting your brand and you're getting visibility, you know, up at the top of our search results page above all your competitors. Um, and you're only showing in cases where you've got availability um, and where you can actually receive a direct uh, well, a booking or a direct booking if you're using our, our TripConnect cost per click product in tandem. Um, so I guess my, my recommendation would be uh, I don't accept the premise. Don't play in the search engine space. Play down funnel. Actually, I guess, sorry, one extra thought, because the words prime position were quite loaded, and so we both ended up coming at the same place. Maybe uh, we're misjudging, or I'm misjudging the question, and you're not saying I want to be prime position for London hotels or London B&Bs. Um, maybe the, the area you could be prime position in search is if your B&B is, I don't know, right next door to a theatre, and people come to that theatre for a night out, and that's a reason why they stay at your B&B, then being prime position for people who search for hotels near theater X, like that might be the prime position worth searching for. And you've only got 16 rooms to fill, so you could get, be very niche. So maybe if you went super niche, um, that could work. Yeah, and you can you can apply that same strategy to your listing on you know various sites, in, including TripAdvisor, obviously. We mentioned earlier making sure that your description is reflective of um, you know, locational context, especially things like you know a theater that uh, might be driving a lot of traffic to your hotel. Um, TripAdvisor as a property drives quite a bit of traffic and ranks pretty high in search engines. So just a little tweak to your TripAdvisor, you know, profile page might very well cause you to be, you know, up, cause your listing to show up in the top two or three results for the query that Charlie just described. Um, you know, in that case, obviously, then sort of uh, advertiser is coming to TripAdvisor and you're going to want to take advantage of um, contact links uh, there to make sure that they're driving them back to you to book direct. Great. Thank you both. So I know we're running short on time. I'm going to do one last question for both of you. So, or sorry, one last question for each of you individually. Um, Charlie, OTAs dominate searches for my property and repeat guests even get lured into booking on their sites, not realizing it's not direct. What are the best strategies for, for preventing this? Yeah, this is when I don't like OTAs. Uh, when they're not driving incremental business, then that's a, it's a little bit mean to charge you so much. So the, one of the first things is trademarking your hotel name. If it's trademarkable and defensible, then that you know, if you've got that trademarked, you can then appeal to Google to prevent uh, people from bidding on it. Um, and then appearing in Meta. So uh, whether that's Google or TripAdvisor, you know, if if right now you've got OTAs who are taking your availability and they're the ones appealing in Meta searches. Um, then given how easy it is for you to appeal, appear in that meta search, as we've heard already here, uh, then you should be there. So don't let the OTAs do that last mile of marketing for you. You know, be on TripConnect, appear there yourself. Great. Thank you so much. And Jeff, one last question for you. How can I target the midweek traveler? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, so somebody, uh, you know, potentially more business traveler, I'm guessing, versus kind of leisure is – is the goal here? Um, uh, I guess a couple different tactics depending on <clears throat> which of our products you're adopting. Um, if you're using our TripConnect uh, CPC product, you obviously have the ability to um, to kind of uh, vary your bid um, uh, on the uh, on the site, and you have the ability to change that sort of day to day. So you could, in theory, not be participating on weekends and participating during weekdays. Um, similarly, we make it a little bit easier when you're uh, using our sponsor placements product. So we have an explicit targeting capability for that product, which will allow you to uh, either target your ads just to people searching for weekdays or for people searching for weekends or obviously the combination of both. Um, that creates a, a, a good way for you to just focus on uh, what might be more of a sort of business uh, traveler profile with your marketing dollars when you're deploying them on TripAdvisor. Terrific. 
Thanks so much to both of you for all of the great answers and content that you've shared today. Um, we're going to end Q&A there because we're coming up on time. Um, any final thoughts, final words? Not to put you on no, have, have confidence in chasing direct bookings. Uh, it, is, it amazes me how if you really focus and do step by step, you know, hotels can jump from a very small number of direct bookings to having a really productive channel. And I mean, I would just reinforce some of the points that Charlie made earlier, which is just focus on getting the basics right. Everybody tries, you know, at times to kind of jump to um, being able to compete with the large brands and OTAs, you know, just after sort of opening a property or, or um, you know, uh, just after starting to um, uh, to figure out sort of the advertising ecosystem. Um, focus on the basics, get the basics right, and grow from there. Um, and I think we've given you a lot of content here that will help you do that. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you to our audience for watching today. Um, and with that, we're going to end today's webinar. As a reminder, please take our survey by clicking the clipboard link in the bottom menu of your console. Your feedback helps shape the content we'll cover in our next webinars and helps us improve. And that's all we have for you today. Thanks so much, everyone. Goodbye.